I very rarely get a full night's sleep. I'm usually up at like 4 or 5 a.m. every single day. A good night's sleep has long been something that eludes me. Enter Beam. It's a functional wellness brand that makes products for sleep, calm, focus, energy, hydration, and recovery. Beam's new limited edition sleep product, White Chocolate Peppermint Dream Powder, is a healthy hot cocoa for winter. It's here to give you your best sleep ever. Since I've started taking Beam, I've been sleeping through the night, and I don't have that weird fog when I wake up every morning. Ready to try? Get $20 off any purchase over $75 when you go to beamorganics.com slash ratchet or just go to beamorganics.com and type in code ratchet at checkout. This offer includes one-time purchases and subscriptions. With subscriptions, you get access to exclusive monthly savings, free shipping, and VIP customer support, plus a great beam frother and mug. You can also pause or cancel anytime. White chocolate peppermint won't last long. Head to beamorganics.com slash ratchet or just go to beamorganics.com and type in code ratchet at checkout for $20 off any purchase over $75. Bomba's mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So this holiday, when you gift Bomba's to someone on your list, you're also giving them to someone in need. It's a give, give. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft, seamless, tagless, and has a luxuriously cozy feel. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere, which makes them the perfect cozy winter layers. There's a pair of Bombas socks for everything you do. They come in performance styles for every sport, holiday styles for when you're feeling festive, and lots more. Bombas t-shirts are made with thoughtful design features like invisible seams, soft fabrics, and the perfect weight so they hang just right. Bombas underwear has a barely there feel with second skin support that might make you forget they're even there in a good way. Bombas are the coziest gifts for everyone on your list. And thanks to their festive gift boxes, you don't even have to wrap them. All you have to do is the giving. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested items at homeless shelters. In that order. That's why Bombas donates one for every item you buy. Bombas are made to be the perfect gift and made to give back to those in need. So, happy giving! I love Bomba's Cozy Essentials, and I'm definitely getting a bunch of socks as gifts this year. Go to bombas.com slash ratchet and get 20% off any purchase during their big holiday sale. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash ratchet for 20% off. Bombas.com slash ratchet. Sprite Winter Spice Cranberry is back and now available with zero sugar. Enjoy the cool, crisp taste of the Sprite you love, refreshed with tart cranberry and a warm spice blend that's perfect for the holidays. Copyright 2021, The Coca-Cola Company. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. I like my voice this week. I usually don't. I don't ever go back and listen to episodes of my podcast. Like I do the recording and then I do the edit and I never listen to the episode again. Like if I get in the car with one of my friends or my mom or I walk in a room and like my dad is playing the podcast, I'd be like, ah, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. The sound of my voice drives me nuts because it doesn't sound like the way my voice sounds to me, but neither here nor there. The point is, I was doing the testing to make sure the audio levels were right because I'm traveling and something about the acoustics of this room, it makes my voice sound to me warmer than usual. I actually like it. I'm in New York this week. So, you know, if you hear noise, sirens, honking horns, people cursing, things that are, you know, very run of the mill, very standard in New York. Don't be alarmed. I'm just in the city again. I had sworn to myself and to others, that I was not coming back to New York until April. Last time I was here was October. I was like, God bless for the remainder of autumn and for the full winter. I will see y'all again somewhere in April, perhaps May. But lo and behold, 
here I am. I'm actually here for work, doing a lot of play, but I'm actually here for work. Amazon brought me in for the premiere of their new show that dropped earlier today. I'm recording this on Friday. I'm on the East Coast. So Friday at 1.36 p.m. It's like 10.30 where I live. It's not where I am. But they've got a brand new black girl show on Amazon Prime called Harlem. Four black women living uptown as they live, love, thrive, make messes of their lives and, and try to clean them up as best they can. Um, it's a really good show. And I'm not just saying that because I'm working the campaign. I asked specifically to see screeners of the show. I was interested in the show, but I wanted to see the screeners before I signed on because I was like, yo, is this a good show? Because like, I got a pretty good track record with my audience of telling them like, you know, this is a good thing to watch. This is not a good thing to watch. Hashtag what's Demi watching is a whole thing. Like a lot of people have told me that they'll like go on my my Instagram page and scroll and be like, oh, what's Demetria? What's Demetria watching? So I take that very, very seriously. So they sent over the screeners last week. I got them right before Thanksgiving and I binged them. I binged the whole episode on Thanksgiving Day. I was two hours late for dinner. If you follow me on Instagram, I, I told a bit of this story earlier, but I thought it was an amazing show. I liked the characters enough that I was getting secondhand embarrassment by some of the crazy things they did. And I was like, oh, 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 no, no, no. And I was like, oh, I'm like really invested in a way that like I usually don't get with shows. The only other show I do that with, oddly enough, is All American because I feel like those are my kids. And I was like, y'all so dysfunctional. Y'all get on my nerves. Y'all doing a whole bunch of shit you ain't got no business doing. But, you know, as the adult in the room, I have to make sure that you're safe and protect you from yourself. And I feel very similar about some of these characters, especially Angie. There's this character, Angie. She's got this big old Afro brown girl. She's a singer and she just has like the most amazing one liners. And she's also got a, a personality and disposition that's very similar to my, I don't know how to explain this, my online, not a persona per se, but it's not exactly how I am in the real world. It's who I am. It's just not the full throttle. But the the snack ministry, witty one-liners, always talking about something random. In my real life, I'm a little more like, you know, logical and cohesive. That in the stuff that I post, I'm just a little more like, you know, halfway informative, halfway entertaining, halfway appalled. That's sort of like the the realm that Angie's mind works in. And I was like, oh my God, I love she. I love she. But the series is starring. Megan Good. I've wanted her to be in a starring role for a really long time. I felt like she's often been like the girlfriend, the pretty girlfriend, or like the the side friend of the main friend. And I'm thinking of of jumping the broom. Like she's there and she's working, but it's I really feel like she gets like the center that she deserves. So this vehicle is like really good for her. I don't want to say too much about the show because I went in completely blind. I'd only seen I'd only seen the trailer and I knew nothing else about it. And I hate when people spoil shows for me. And I'm also just hyper aware the show just came out like at midnight. So most people, especially if you got like a job, haven't had a chance to watch it. Although I posted about it this morning and one of my friends started watching it. She listens to the podcast. She's going to know who I'm talking about. She's at work watching it. She works for a network, a different network, but she's got a giant flat screen in her office. So she just sent me a picture of of her laptop open and, and doing actual work. And then the screen behind her is, you know, the girls from the show sitting in their favorite restaurant. You know, some folks are working and watching. Honestly, though, it's a fun show. It has good cadence. And so it's something that you can put on in the background. But it also has like a lot of nuance. So it's something that you just need to pay attention to. If for no other reason than to catch all of Angie's one-liners. I love this actress, Shaniqua. What is her last name? Shaniqua Shandai. Shandai. S-H-A-N-D-A-I. Is that Dai or Day? I don't know. But I love her. That's what I'm trying to say. I appreciate the fact that the show seems to be leaning in to the Sex and the City comparisons. I don't mind the Sex and the City comparisons for Black girl shows. First and foremost, Sex and the City was a cultural phenomenon. It was a hit show on HBO. It ran for six seasons, had two films. One of them was good. The other one was so-so, but the wardrobe was amazing. And then now has a spinoff after the show's been off the air for what, like 15 years? There was also a prequel. Wasn't it like maybe on like the CW or UPN? Do you remember that? There was a prequel to Sex and the City where Carrie was a teenager. It didn't last long. I don't think it made it more than a season or so. 
But I add that to make even further the point that Sex in the City is a juggernaut. And I think that if you create a show and it gets comparisons to something that was very well done and that was very successful, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And also as a black girl who watched Sex in the City like religiously, I always wanted to see more black people on the show. I wanted to see a black woman who was equally as fabulous as Carrie and her friends. And that never happened. But Harlem is clearly a show about four black women where four black women are centered. And even though I feel like it's very much an homage to Sex in the City, I feel like if you ever go back and watch Sex in the City, it was very on the nose culturally, even a little ahead of the culture at the time. But it's been 15 years and the culture just like moved at such a fast rate that the show feels very dated when you go back and watch it. So I think it was very much time for something that was new and fresh and fun. And I think Harlem does that. I think it talks about sex and relationships and women, single women navigating the dating terrain. I think it it captures a different nuance. For black women, because the dating scene is definitely not the same as it is for white women, but it captures the nuance of black girl dating, dating, and like the nuances of like our sexual mores. Like there are some things that I think wider society at large is more comfortable with um, that black girls be like, wait, what? And I'm trying not to say what it is because again, I don't want to give any of the show away because it just, just came out. I don't want to like spoil anything. Inevitably, I think it's going to be compared to Run the World, which is also about black women in Harlem. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch Run the World. But that's another one of those things. Like, I feel like sometimes as black folks, we get this idea that there's only room for one. And I was like, there have been countless shows at the same time about four white women doing various things in different cities. And no one seems to say that like, oh, well, we already have a show about four white women. I feel like that's something we only do to like black and brown people. Um, Like, oh, you already have one show. Why do you need another? Like, well, why do you need a hundred of the same fucking show? Why? Why? I think it's good. Like I said, I watched it in like one sit down binge session. I'm like obsessed with Tracy Oliver. She's the writer, creator, and executive producer. So this whole thing just like, you know, is her brainchild. But I, I introduced myself to her or reintroduced myself to her at the premiere. We technically had never met. But there's a backstory and I don't want to tell you what it is because I've asked her to come on the show to talk to us. You know, how like I get really into shows and just because I can ask, I do. Um, I ask the showrunners to come on and like gush with me about my favorite shows. Hopefully I can have Tracy come on to talk about um, Harlem because I got questions. I got questions, but I want to give y'all a chance to watch the show first before I say any more. Great after party. Um, budgets are back. I knew they were coming back because I'm hosting, um, have I told y'all this yet? No, I haven't, but I can tell you now because it's official. I'm hosting an event in LA on the 15th. I can't tell you what it is yet, but it's for a movie and it's for a studio and it's really sexy. They are literally spending more on this event than I spent on my wedding. So one, let me back up. So they had the screening at the Magic Johnson Theater in Harlem. They had a really beautiful setup, like the red carpet. A wedding's worth of flowers. Like, it was absolutely beautiful. And then the after party, they had shuttle vans take us to Harlem Parish, which was only like eight blocks or so away. But the champagne was flowing. The hors d'oeuvres were passed. The DJ was loud. There was a fashion show. A bar upstairs, bar downstairs, a chocolate bar. All these, like, activations, like, around the room. I want to say there was, like, there was a candle set up. There was a makeup set up. There were all these sort of like Instagrammable spaces that you could like take your pretty photos in. A whole light show. It was just absolutely amazing. And then like the venue itself. I'm convinced it used to be a church just because of the architecture and the fact that it's called Harlem Parish. The parish part is like, you know, church, a Catholic church at that. It's just absolutely beautiful. But all the right people, I mean, like, you know, you see certain people in a room and you're like, oh, I'm at the, the good event of the night. I saw one of my favorite comedians. He had a not so recent Um, special on Netflix that I howled about. Never really paid him a lot of attention until that special. And I was like, how I miss you, little thick self. I blatantly and shamelessly hit on him. And it wasn't the champagne. It was the fine and the energy. And he's enthusiastic about it. I'll let you know how that goes. I know people are like, what about him? Mams and sirs, I'm single. (laughs) I'm talking complete shit right now. I've seen him every day that I've been in New York. It's, yeah. Yeah. Next topic. Oh, he's texting me now. Hold on. I'm the worst. 
I cannot concentrate around this man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the worst. What else? There was something else I was going to tell you. The party, the champagne, the performers, everybody was there. It was just a really good night. That's what I'm trying to say. It was just a really good night, and I was really happy to like be back in New York. Even though it's colder than I'm accustomed to. Like I had to go buy a coat when I got here. Like I arrived in like my little cute coat. I walked out the airport at JFK and that first gust of wind hit me in the ass. Literally in the ass. Like my top part was well covered, but my lower portion hit me in the ass. And I was like, oh, fuck no. I got to my hotel and my room wasn't ready yet. So I was like, well, let me go buy a coat. So I walked over to Zara and found myself a coat that hit my knees. You know, I wear all black all the time. So I'm like walking around looking like full Morpheus and do not care because I am warm. But New York has been good. I've been catching up with like a bunch of my friends. Like my high school bestie is here um, and my college bestie is here. Davida. Remember Davida from Mexico? She's in town. So I had cocktails with her yesterday and then dinner with Jessica. I went to the premiere with Jason. Cousin Jason. It's not my cousin. It's my ex-husband's cousin. The family is family. So, you know. But it was good times. I'm really happy to be in New York this week. And the weather's not so bad. It's just, you know. It's 80 in L.A. today. I'm just saying. This episode is sponsored by Ana Luisa. I am so excited to partner with this brand. It's a jewelry brand with a simple but clear cut idea. High quality jewelry shouldn't cost the planet. Their metals are noble and recycled whenever possible. And their gemstones are transparently sourced, making conscious luxury accessible to everyone. They are also the first direct to consumer jewelry brand to become carbon neutral. And if you go to shop.annaluisa.com slash ratchet, you can get 25% off your purchase. Anna Luisa jewelry is of exceptional quality. They have long lasting pieces crafted with care from the best noble metals. And my favorite, they offer a 365 day warranty to replace or refund any piece that doesn't meet your expectations. Anna Luisa jewelry also has fair prices. Their jewelry starts at $39, so no luxury markup. They also release new jewelry collections every Friday. I love going on the site and checking out the new releases. You know, I got a thing for those stackable necklaces. I got a lot of them. I got a lot of them now. I absolutely recommend checking out Ana Luisa. Go to shop.analuisa.com slash ratchet. That's shop.ana. L-U-I-S-A dot com slash ratchet. I love them. Their pieces start at $39 with sales up to 25% off. Get your holiday gift on shop.analuisa.com slash ratchet. Again, that's shop.analuisa dot com slash ratchet for 25% off. I very rarely get a full night's sleep. I'm usually up at like 4 or 5 a.m. every single day. A good night's sleep has long been something that eludes me. Enter Beam. It's a functional wellness brand that makes products for sleep, calm, focus, energy, hydration, and recovery. Beam's new limited edition sleep product, White Chocolate Peppermint Dream Powder, is a healthy hot cocoa for winter. It's here to give you your best sleep ever. It's triple lab tested with no added sugar or artificial sweeteners, only 15 calories, and it still tastes delicious. It's founded by two former professional athletes, and it has no THC. It contains the ultimate sleep-promoting ingredients, nanohemp, reishi, magnesium, ithionine, and melatonin. Since I've started taking Beam, I've been sleeping through the night, and I don't have that weird fog when I wake up every morning. Ready to try? Get $20 off any purchase over $75 when you go to beamorganics.com slash ratchet or just go to beamorganics.com and type in code ratchet at checkout. This offer includes one-time purchases and subscriptions. With subscriptions, you get access to exclusive monthly savings, free shipping, and VIP customer support, plus a great beam frother and mug. You can also pause or cancel anytime. White chocolate peppermint won't last long. Head to beamorganics.com slash ratchet or just go to beamorganics.com and type in code ratchet at checkout for $20 off any purchase over $75.
What else is going on? Oh, the merch drop, the, the Ratchet and Respectable merch. If you have not picked up your merch, please go and do so. Please go and do so because the stuff is starting to sell out. Like the logo hoodies are gone. They're all gone. Like no size is left at all. I think there's only double XLs in the crew necks. The logo t-shirts, I think there's only larges left. There might be a small or two, but that's almost gone. All the pink merchandise, the shut the fuck up is free. I think there's four or five small hoodies left and the rest of that is gone. The podcast green merch, almost gone. The white ratchet and respectable crew necks, almost gone. There's still a decent number of hoodies in stock. And then cut the check, that's moving quick. What's the last one? Interested men act interested. Those are weird. They move in waves. I don't know if it's like in response to like, you know, something else happens and people are like, I'm going to get this shirt and wear it just to like be like subliminal with somebody. I don't know. But if you want merch, get the merch. Like, don't wait till like, you know, shit next week and be like, well, I want it. There's nothing I can do for you. I mean, there is, but I'm not going to go through the effort to restock until I until after Christmas. I'm going to Ghana for Christmas. So I'm going to Ghana for Christmas and New Year. I think I still don't have a ticket We're working on that. But there will be no restock. I'm not killing myself this year trying to get stuff out. Like I dropped it before Thanksgiving so we could get everybody their merchandise in time for the holidays. What else? It's much of sad news this week. I've been following this story of uh, Jacqueline Avant, who I want to just say is a whole and independent person separate from her husband who happens to be very famous. And I'm deliberately not saying his name at the moment for a reason because Every time someone speaks of this woman, they say Jacqueline Avant, comma, wife of, mother-in-law to, mother of. And I just want to be mindful for a moment that she is just a whole and important person, independent of the person that she's married to or who her son-in-law is or who her children are. She was an 81-year-old woman who had a whole, full, wonderful life that was cut short. 81 is a lot of life lived, but she had more to go and her life should not have been cut short so senselessly. If you have not been following this story, there's been a rash of of uh, home break-ins in very wealthy neighborhoods in LA and stories about celebrities who have been robbed or attempted robbery or something like that. There was a story a couple weeks ago, less than a month, about Terrence J. Terrence Jenkins, I think that's what he goes by now. He was Terrence J when he was hosting BET all those years. But someone, I want to say, followed him home and attempted to rob him. And he was able to get away. He wasn't injured, but he shared the story. But just like being in LA, like you just, there's a lot of stories about very random like acts of violence in LA, like in places you wouldn't expect. So like, like Beverly Hills, for instance, like some people were sitting outside, like was it on Rodeo? Um, and somebody walked up and, like, and tried to like rob a man for his watch or something and fired a gun and everybody went crazy. But that's just not really like Beverly Hills shit. My understanding, I thought Beverly Hills was relatively safe. As of late, there's been an uptick in stories about home invasions and robberies. And in the case of Jackie Avant, her neighborhood... From what I've been reading, there had been a series of break-ins in the neighborhood. And the neighborhood, I don't know if it's a neighborhood watch or just a council of, you know, neighbors came together. But they'd hired local security to start patrolling the neighborhood. As as early as I want to say, like the week of or the week before, there was this break-in at the Avant's house. I also read that the Avant's had a security person in their home at the time of the break-in. I read that he was shot at. I haven't read anything about him returning fire. There's been lots of misinformation spreading around this story. So I hope that that part is accurate. But there was a break-in at the house and, and Jacqueline Yvonne and her husband Clarence were home. And for whatever insane reason, like one, I don't understand why you're breaking into somebody's house when like the people are home, like break into the house when they're gone. Like that's what I would do if I was a criminal, but You know, maybe there's a logic that I don't understand because I don't have like a criminal mind in that way. But they broke into the house, obviously, to rob the house. The Avants are are wealthy people. They've got stuff and things and surely electronics and jewelry that are easily resold for cash. But they shot her. It's an 81-year-old woman in the stomach. She was taken to the hospital. I mean, she didn't survive. 
And so the the pictures that have been circulating everywhere of her and her husband, and they just look like they're just a sweet old couple. She's 81. He's 90. You know, but you see pictures of them on the red carpet and they're like holding on to each other for dear life. They've been married, I think, 54 years. They had two children, two adult children who, God, I mean, my heart breaks for everyone in this situation. And weirdly, I don't know if it's weird, but I just, this is the way I'm processing it. I just, I keep thinking about Jackie, the wife, and she's gone. She's not here. She cannot feel anything like she's beyond, right? But I just keep thinking about like the final moments of like this 81 year old woman's life. You've lived a good life. You've raised your children. Like you've been with your husband for 54 years. Like they still go into like red carpet premieres and stuff. They still vibrant and active people. Like they're in like the the twilight chill years of their lives. They had like a ton of money. They could just like travel and chill and do nothing. Spoil their grandchildren. Maybe because I'm a woman and she's a woman. I don't I don't know. But I'm having a very adverse reaction in a way that I don't usually to this murder. I, I guess maybe because of like the senselessness of it. Or maybe just the just the you know you shot an 81 year old woman. Like what the fuck. But I wanted to focus on her for just a moment because everything that I see written really doesn't. It's all about like all the people she's connected to. And I just wanted to focus on her because like her life, I said this before, but it's worth saying again, but her life on its own as a whole, just woman with no connections to anybody else just mattered without all the attachments to other people. So one of the reasons the story has been making the rounds, in addition to it being so horrific, is that Jackie is married to Clarence Avant. I didn't know who Clarence Avant was until about two or three years ago. Netflix did a documentary on him called The Black Godfather. And a lot of people were talking about it. He's been, he was a music executive and he's friends with like everybody. Not even just friends. He's the mentor to everybody. There's a reason he's called The Black Godfather. If you're in a situation and you need to know how to get out of that situation, Clarence Avant is the person you call. And I haven't gone back and watched the documentary. I wanted to last night, but I was really tired when I got back to the hotel. Did I remember this correctly? Either Bill Clinton was in the documentary or he talked about Bill Clinton calling him during his like worst crises being like Clarence, what do I do? He's like that type of influence. And then there's tons of other people, like very like well-known A-list people being like, yeah, when I got caught up in this, I called Clarence. He's one of those people. My Aunt Rosie used to say like an intelligent person knows uh, a little bit about a lot of things. He knows a lot about a lot of things and also knows a lot of people and also has a lot of money. It's an amazing combination. But even before this documentary, which is how we end up getting a documentary, he's like the the godfather. I was going to say consigliere, but that's not it. But he's literally like the, the Don Vito to all of these very influential people who go to this man for advice before they make their decisions. Because Clarence just, you know, has this this ability to think things through in a way that other people can't see or to make connections or tell you what to ask for. I know there were a bunch of people that said, like, you know, I got like my, my first big break my big job. Like, what do I, I don't even know what to ask these people for. And Clarence be like, ask him for this and don't, don't, don't settle for anything else. Be like, oh, okay. And it worked. And that's the important part. His advice works. The Avant's daughter. I didn't know this until recently, until the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, when Jay-Z was recently inducted. Clarence Avant's daughter is married to the CEO of Netflix, which, you know, I was like, oh, is that how they got the documentary? And I'm not mad. I'm just like, you know, is, is that how it happened? Like, you know, you roll over and be like, honey, I think my dad should have a documentary. It's much easier than, you know, having to go in and like, you know, pitch in traditional ways. And I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying, you know, if I was married to the head of Netflix and and I wanted a documentary on my father, that's how I would do it. So at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the head of Netflix is there and everybody was like, what is he doing here? Well, because Clarence Avant was also being honored and his daughter came because, you know, her father is being honored and her husband came because his father-in-law is being honored or inducted, not even honored, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But between the two of them, the murder of, um, of Jackie Avant has been a leading news story in a lot of places. And the police have made it a priority investigation. I was reading last night on the YBF that they've actually apprehended a suspect. And I knew before I saw it, I, I just something told me, you know what I'm about to say, he black. He looks almost like a stereotype of like, kind of like the sinister criminal thug you see like in movies. 
gang tats on his cheeks. The mugshot I saw last night, his hair was in like literally Afro puffs with, and then like the tats. He just looked like menacing. And um, when the police caught up with him, he was breaking into another house and he and he'd accidentally shot himself in the foot. So people heard a gunshot go off called the police and by the time the police arrived dude was in the backyard because you know he couldn't run or escape because he shot himself literally in the foot and I was like you can't make this shit up but they identified him from video footage that they just had from from the robbery at the Avant house and realized it was him and the other part of it he's been locked up several times has a bunch of felony charges he's like a career criminal he was out on parole for domestic violence when he's, when he's been robbing these houses. It's just such a tragic fucking story. The police said that they have like footage from the Avant home that clearly shows that this is the same guy that they arrested the other day. So I expect that he will be, you know, charged and maybe he'll plead guilty or not. I don't know, but he'll be locked up again because if nothing else, if you're on parole and you just got caught, you know, with a gun that you shot your own self with, but still... While in the process of robbing someone else's house, you're going to be locked up. So at least this person is off the streets. But like you took someone, took someone, start there. You killed someone. You took someone's life. And it was also in addition to it was someone's mother. It was someone's wife. It was someone's mother-in-law. I mean, locking him up for murder. He should be because he's, you know, not safe for the streets. But that doesn't bring her back. I don't know if there's there's a justice that can be served there. And I also think just about like Clarence Avant too, like it's a 90 year old man. You've been with your wife for 54 years. Like y'all are in a whole codependent situation. Y'all don't know how to exist without each other. And yes, he has children who love him and he, nothing makes up for a wife. Nothing makes up for losing your companion, the mother of your children for 54 years. That's a That's a void that cannot be filled. I just... I feel awful for him. And then their children. Like, people keep making this point to say that they had, like, adult children. And I'm like, I want to say their kids are maybe around my age, a little bit older. The age really isn't important. There is no time in your life in which your mother can be senselessly murdered and you're going to be okay. You got a good five years before you even, like, you know, kind of all right again. Um, Another void that can't be filled. My sympathies are are with the Avant family and their friends. I know a lot of people um, who were friends of the family, friends of the friends of the children, or even friends of the parents. Black in LA is actually a really small circle, like it like tiny. Across ages, occupations, neighborhoods, even transplants. Remember I told you I moved when I first moved to LA, like I used to go to parties at the diplomat's house? Or did I not tell y'all that? I might have left that part out. But yeah, shit like that. They throw big parties at their house. And the one I went to was Cory Booker was it wasn't even a fundraiser. They didn't want money. Cory Booker didn't ask for a dime. He was just like, he was running for president. He was just like, I want you to meet me and I want you to know that this is what I'm about and I want you to consider, um, you know, voting for me for president. And so I went to an event and Cory Booker was right there. And at the end, we took pictures and he was like, we look related. I was like, all light-skinned people don't look alike. And then I saw the pictures. We took a selfie and I was like, oh shit, he could be my brother. Yeah. But that's the type of shit I mean. Like, LA is like weirdly insular in that way when it comes to black folks. But I know a bunch of people that knew them and everyone's just like fucked up about it, which, yeah, I get it. Sad. Sad. Feels so bad. What else is on my list to talk about? We do actually have some good news this week. Kind of good. There's a new black mayor in Atlanta, which isn't really that surprising to me. What is his name? I wasn't really paying much attention to the the mayoral race in Atlanta because I just assumed the mayor would be black and that's all I really cared about. Andre Dickens. I know absolutely nothing about him other than my favorite artist was like campaigning for him on social media. And that's the only reason I knew who he was. But like, I don't live in Atlanta. I'm not invested in Atlanta. I assumed the mayor would be black. So it wasn't like, you know, I'm always rooting for everybody black. I knew it wasn't going to be the lady who who was trying to close down the strip clubs. I knew she wasn't going to win. So Andre Dickens is the new mayor. So congratulations to him. Let me know, Atlantans. Is that what y'all are called? What are y'all called? You're not AT aliens, because that sounds ridiculous. Atlantans? Atlanteans? 
Atlantis, Atlantis, I don't, what are y'all called? Let me know if he's like, you know, if, if, if y'all like him, if he says crazy shit, how y'all feel about him. I would guess that the majority of y'all do because he just got elected. But then I also think about how like, you know, Trump got elected and like the majority of Americans didn't like him. I don't know how this works. So y'all let me know. I don't, you can't always just assume that like all black people are like, you know, proper black. They could be like Terry Crews black. I don't know. Y'all let me know. So that's good black news. There's Jasmine Sullivan is going on tour, which I've been waiting on forever and a day. Some people were saying her tickets were a little pricey. I went and looked and I was like, okay, 150, which maybe that's pricey. I'm sorry. I'm used to seeing like Usher ticket prices. So I was like 150, like I can swing 150. I couldn't swing three G's for, for Usher tickets. Adele is also going on tour or better. She's doing a, a Vegas residency, which is similar, but not the same thing. I think I knew that last podcast. I just didn't get a chance to talk about it. You know how much I love Adele. The tickets don't go on sale until the 7th, I believe. But I was looking up to see how much tickets were because I was like, I know I'm going to have to get some coin together for a Vegas residency for Adele. She's going to be there, I want to say, January until April. But I really, really, really want to go. But what I was reading, and this was in a UK paper, folks were upset at the price of Adele tickets. And I said, well, how much is Adele? You're doing whole articles about the price before the tickets even, you know, come out. It said tickets start, and I hope this is not true. It said tickets start at 2,161 American USD dollars and dineros. And as of right now, before the tickets go on sale, so this is not resale ticket prices. So it starts at 2,100 and it goes up to 9,444. I was like, I guess it's going to look like I'm watching Adele, that rerun of the concert she did on Oprah. I was like, I guess I'll just be watching that like over and over and over again. I love Adele. I love Adele. Although she need to run that black lady some money for stealing her concept. That's way too many like similarities just to be coincidental. I love Adele. I ain't paying $2,000 to see Adele. At least with Usher, when I was like halfway contemplating paying like $3,000, which I was never going to do. But I like to pretend in my head that I was going to. So I was like, I knew Usher was going to give us a show because Usher can sing, Usher can dance, Usher's going to have dancers. Like, that Usher show was one of the best shows I've ever been to. I'm sorry you can hear the sirens in the background. I'm in New York. If I pause every time I hear a siren, we'll never get this podcast done. I I knew Usher was going to give, like, full show with, like, you know, full range of entertainment. Adele sings. And she don't need to do nothing else but sing. Everybody is not meant to dance. Some people just need to stand there and sing. Adele can do that, and I'm fine with that, but I'm not paying $2,000 minimum. I'm not paying $2,000 to watch Adele stand there and sing. Not even live. I think it's because it's like a Vegas residency. In Vegas, like people just spend money for like no damn reason. Like Vegas would just charge extra, just like $90 for breakfast, just because it's Vegas, and people are like, it's Vegas. No, I don't believe in that shit. So I was like, maybe I'll try to catch Adele when she performs in London. She's doing two shows. And I was like, I would rather pay the money to fly to London, expensive-ass London, and stay in an expensive-ass hotel in London for cheaper Adele tickets and at least feel like I get like a whole experience of like, oh, I'm in London, seeing Adele. And then I'll pop over to like Paris and, you know, maybe Rome to Rome. I don't know. But I'll make a whole experience out of it as opposed to like dropping two Gs just for tickets to see Adele. That's not even like including all of the, you know, at least day or weekend in Vegas. I hope those prices are not accurate because, again, they haven't gone on sale. So I'm like, I don't know how they know. We'll see. We'll see. Is there something interfering with your happiness or maybe something preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, many people can relate, self-included. And the good news is BetterHelp is here to, well, help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment and start communicating in under 48 hours. To be clear, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Now, my favorite thing about BetterHelp is it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp's licensed professional counselors specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, anger, and so much more. And anything you share is confidential. 
In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. For colored nerds, your other favorite black culture podcast from creators Brittany Luce and Eric Eddings is back. You might know Brittany and Eric from their podcast and Quibi show, The Nod, or you might have listened to For Colored Nerds from way back. However you got hooked, drop in every week for smart conversation, games, and celebrity guests as For Colored Nerds peels back the layers of black culture we rarely discuss in mixed company. The show could be discussing one week, why Power, book three, Raising Canaan is one of the sexiest shows on TV, and the next recontextualizing the legacies of early black cinema gems with the creator of the Black Film Archive. I love Brittany and Eric's podcast. It is so relatable and funny, and their cultural criticism is top notch. You can listen to For Colored Nerds right now on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Finding the time or motivation to fit in a workout during the busy holiday season can be tough. But with Peloton, you'll get a fitness experience that's so entertaining and fun, you'll always be looking forward to your next session. With its authentic instructors and unique immersive content, the Peloton experience is unmatched. Now, what I love most about Peloton is all the variety. They've got these playlists for every mood, from hip-hop to country, rock to pop, and everything in between. I also love that working out never feels like a chore because there's always something new to discover. A new class like cycling, strength, yoga, bar, meditation, and more. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. Try Peloton classes free for the rest of the year. New members only. Visit OnePeloton.com slash app to learn more. Terms apply. Peloton, when your workout is a joy, it's a joy to work out. Um, what else is going on? There was something else I wanted to talk about, but I'll be honest with y'all right now. It's Friday in New York City and I'm leaving tomorrow morning and I kind of just want to like go out in the city and like roam around. I kind of want to go do like a little shopping. One of my friends is having a party tonight, um, which I wasn't invited to. And I was like, can I come to your party? Is it okay if I RSVP? Because I wasn't invited. And she was like, well, you live in L.A., Demetria. Like, I didn't think you were going to come from L.A. for the party. Like, so I just didn't. And I was like, well, you never know. And she was like, well, yes, of course you can come. And I was like, well, thank you. I was like, even if I can't attend things because I, like, live, you know, amongst the West on a three-hour time difference, I still want to, like, you know, know when things are occurring. I could at least, like, send a gift or something. And she was like, well, I didn't know that because, you know, you move. People really, like... There's still a feeling of way about me moving. Or maybe the way I moved, because I didn't tell people goodbye. I mean, that could do it. That that honestly could do it. Eh, Maybe I have to go easy on people. The other stuff on the list is like kind of like trivial or not new. We can save it. Do we want to talk about Derek Jackson and his conversation about he tweeted something the other day that like just pissed everybody off. Like he found out or someone told him that single women are going to bed between seven and eight o'clock and he got this information and was apparently outraged by it because he was like are single women too comfortable and I was like what like how do you even arrive at that I mean let's start here one the scandal that he had earlier this year about the multitude of women that he cheated on his wife with just I understand he wants to continue as the occupation that he was doing um and there's a way to do that But maybe perhaps he should just focus on people who are like in relationships and like trying to repair their marriages Um, because him talking about single women just brings up again like the infidelity because I saw a thread that it was like 3,000 people strong on Twitter speaking specifically about, you know, his concern about single women sleeping habits. And they were like, why are you so concerned about the lives of single women as a married man? Are you still trying to holler at single women? Married man, 
Why aren't you focused on your wife? What concern of it is yours if single women are sleeping? If you're going to be concerned about any woman's sleeping habits, shouldn't they be your wife? There's that. And then the idea that like, you know, can single women be too comfortable? And I'm like, well, what is too comfortable? Like, it's one of those things like you have too much money, too comfortable. What, what does that even mean? My question was, I mean, one, I see nothing wrong. If you, if you want to go to bed at seven o'clock, I mean, go to fuck the bed. I mean, you want to get in the bed and sleep like a starfish anyway. That's one of the joys of single life. I mean, why not enjoy it? But I was like, what else are single women supposed to be doing? I mean, people complain about single women. Like, why are y'all always out? Women in the streets. Women, they ain't like they, gra- they ain't built like their grandmothers anymore. They always out. They always, okay, that's a problem. So the women in the house and in the bed, that's a problem? Y'all just like to complain. Y'all just like to complain. To literally sit around and complain about the sleeping habits of single women. <sighs> I always like to remind people, especially men, and this is a statistical fact. Y'all can go look this up. When, you know, researchers do surveys about, you know, like, the overall happiness of people, right? Married men and single women consistently rank the highest in happiness and peace with their lives. There's also another study that shows that single women live longer than married women. All this concern for single women is, is very faux concern. The real concern is married women. They ain't happy and they dying sooner. It might be. And this is just me theorizing why 70% of divorces are initiated by wives. I also think of the studies that point out that married women with children, so moms, when they do their assessment of like, you know, the biggest stressors of their lives, it's never the kids, it's the husband. And that's not to say there's not wonderful husbands, there's not wonderful marriages, there's not supportive male partners. There are. I want to acknowledge them. I think that's important. Everybody ain't shit. But a lot of married women are very unhappy because of like divisions of labor and inequality in their homes. It's a constant conversation, especially when I was married or after I got engaged and the, the wedding was like six months out. The conversations that married women have with each other and they have with women who are about to get married are entirely different than the conversations they have with single women and even divorced women. And just because I've been like the whole range of like single, engaged, married, separated, divorced. And I can tell you that because I've lived it. Entirely different conversations. It's like married women often, not all, but often tend to sell women on the fantasy of like, oh, it's married life. And it's all like, you know, dual incomes and romance and cute children and bay trips and shit like that. And then as you get closer to the altar or you walk down the aisle and come back up, then they start telling you the nitty gritty. And you'd be like, well, bitch, if you told me this before I got married, I wouldn't have. Which is probably the point. I don't know. I just think it's like insane. Like to openly express concern about the sleeping habits of single women. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they're just tired. Tired of men, because that's something that can wear your ass out, make you get in the bed early. But maybe they've, you know, you, they've worked a long day because, you know, they got bills and they're single and they've got to pay them all on their own. So maybe they're tired from working. Maybe they're tired of having to run all the errands and organize all the things. Maybe that's why they're going to bed. I bet a bunch of married women would love to get in the bed at 7, 8 o'clock, but they can't because they got too much goddamn work to do. They got to look out for the kids because the husband ain't pulling his share. They got to run to the grocery store and do all the errands because they can't trust the husband to get the shit right. I find it ridiculous that anyone's actually concerned about this. As if sleep, women getting eight hours of sleep is problematic. Like, what should we be doing? Working a double shift? Looking for a man? Same difference. (sighs) I don't know. The other thing on my list is this Travis Scott situation. I really don't have much to say about it. We never did talk about Travis Scott and the Astro World Festival in which Travis Scott did this festival. It was called Astro World. 50,000 people went. They didn't have enough security or medical providers. Clearly, multiple balls were dropped because there were crowd surges. There were breaches of uh, people entering without tickets. Um, way too many people were at the event than they were supposed to be. Ten people died. I mean, everyone, their mother is suing him. Last I read, there was something like, over two billion in lawsuits. Obviously, everyone from the families of, of people who were killed at the concert, injured at the concert, nearly all of them are suing. I read that Travis offered to pay for the funerals of of the ten victims, and five of those families were like, "Keep your fucking money," because um, you killed my son, daughter, whoever. Fair, fair assessment. They suing everybody. I haven't come to any conclusion about who is responsible. I think everyone has a degree of responsibility in this. Let me say first and foremost, my primary sympathy 
is with the families of the victims, the people who died, of course, but also the people who were injured or the people who were traumatized um, by being at that event who, you know, may have passed out or, you know, were part of that crowd surge and like panic. So my sympathy is obviously with them. Um, I do have a sympathy for Travis Scott. And maybe I shouldn't. And maybe because he's a young black man. My auntie energy is kicking in. I'm, I'm, I'm having a protective instinct. It was his festival. His name is on it. Ultimately, he's at fault. I, I, I understand that. But I also just think that he's also talent. And because I know how talent is treated in general, talent is treated like you have no goddamn brain. Like you're really just like the face of everything. They they literally tell you like what to say, what to do, what time to show up. Like literally all you do is like create the songs and shit. But most damn near everything else is someone telling you what to do. Because it's like once you become talent, they just assume you don't have a brain. Um, but it's like he didn't hire the security. He didn't hire the the medical providers. He relied on a team of people to do that, likely Live Nation um, or whoever Live Nation contracted out. Um, but because his name is on it, he takes the the burden of it. I don't think any artist, short of like, I don't know, like a Marilyn Manson type artist, wants their fans to be murdered or traumatized at their concert. And I doubt he had any idea what was actually going on. I mean, it's a festival. Like, people take drugs, people pass out, people get drunk. Yes, there are ambulances. Like, I don't know that he even understood what was happening in the audience. But I think it's a, it's a series of people who dropped the ball in that situation. And I don't know if you can really place blame on any one person. But I also know that, like, those families whose children are dead needs some kind of justice. There has to be some sort of accountability there in some fashion. And I don't know what justice looks like for those families. Like, is it, you know, a $2 billion payout? I don't know. It's a really, really sad situation. So that's the episode for this week. I'm about to chop this up and get it uploaded and then go gallivanting in the street. Hopefully I can make this this birthday party on time. Also, I'm doing a live Twitter party tonight for the first two episodes of Harlem. So you can follow me on Twitter at Demetria L. Lucas. Um, I'll post all the information about the Twitter party and you can tune in and watch with me. We can talk about the amazingness that is this new Black Girl Magic show that just dropped on Amazon Prime earlier today. All right. So Twitter party tonight at seven Eastern Standard Time. And then if you haven't gotten your merch, do that now. Stop playing with the merch. I do not want an email from you like three weeks from now talking about my size is sold out and are you restocking XYZ? No. Go get the merch now so we don't have these problems. All right. Talk again next week. Okay. Bye. Every human was born to create. Whether you last picked up a paintbrush yesterday or in grade school, you can explore your creativity and be inspired. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Now, we've often talked about my procrastination issues. I've started taking a Skillshare class. Productivity for creatives. Build a system that brings out your best with Thomas Frank. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, you are creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. You'll experience real improvement with hands-on projects and classes designed for real life. Also, Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when it comes to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Ratchet and get a one month free trial of premium membership. That's one month of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash Ratchet.